spend this money because I'm just like. <laughs> people deluded i'm back again thank you very much for tuning back in each and every time i hope everyone's doing well and safe as usual if you're here in the united kingdom good morning to yourselves good morning good afternoon good evening and in some cases good night i hope everyone's doing well and safe i hope everyone's in good spirits it's thursday we're coming to a close of the week i hope you've all had a progressive week in terms of your goals hopes dreams ambitions aspirations and all of them things and may the following weeks to the year be even better people and obviously you can't do any of that without health so as usual wishing you lot good health and good you know in all aspects of the world on behalf of you and your loved ones um obviously people please make sure you're hitting the like button thank you very much for tuning back in make sure you're following on twitch one love to everyone who was just at my twitch stream where we spoke about the zuma thing pardon me we touched on arsenal we touched on the premier league in general and just went everywhere with it really and truly after this live stream people if you don't know i can't imagine you don't know already wolves against arsenal later today i'll be live on youtube from 6 45 make sure you join me for that one people and things like that um it's due to be an impactful one. I know we had our little jokes at Spurs dropping points yesterday against Southampton and obviously United drawing against Burnley. Winning at Turf Moor isn't for everyone, but life can humble you, in it? You know, what's the saying about whoever laughs first and last laugh and all last laughs last? Let's wait till after the Wolves game because they're two points off us. They're doing well. Their manager's wavy. They've got the 12th man. Wolves have got game, you know, they're street smart as well. It's going to be a tough game. Regardless, we need to win. There's not going to be too many times where we're seeing other people drop points and we are the last people to play. We've got one game a week now. We need to make it count. We can have our opinions about have we got the capabilities to do it. And by all means, we've all offered our opinions. It is what it is. There's 17, 18 games. You don't need to do it. You need to beat Wolves today. You know, there's a tough run of games and you can't really say where the wins are going to come from. Respect, respect for man. You know, you can't. We've got some tough games. We've still got to play United at home. Still got to play Liverpool. Spurs might have lost yesterday. We still got to play them. And that's a new manager they've got. Still got to play West Ham. You know, still got to play Wolves twice at the moment of making this vid. So these are, on the best of days, these are everyone fighting for Europe now. These are six pointers. These are arguably 12 pointers now, you know. And we need a lot to go right. We need no injuries. We need purple patches and form to last. We need, you know, the togetherness. We need a lot. And when you look at it from a Disneyland point of view, of course, that's great. Cerebral point of view, I'm not sure. And we can't afford to drop more dumb points, which we will. You know, we will drop more points this season like others, but it makes me now, I'm at that point in the season where I start putting things together. You know, I'm not going to be on to us about Brentford at the start of the season, despite the fact we took the lead against City. I'm not going to be on to them again about that. Chelsea was poor, but you failed to beat Man United after going ahead. You failed to beat Everton, who were struggling and still struggling. You couldn't break down Burnley. You dropped points against Palace at home. You were never in it, and it's a point gained against Brighton. Those are five games five games where we needed to really do it and we need to do it now we've got an opportunity to make ground against you know uh, wolves if they win they're two points behind us spurs had a game in hand and shanked it so we can make ground on these lot really and truly and we're now at that point of the season where you do need to look at what other people are doing but at the same time you need to remain focused as i've said all season everybody plays 38 games people so, again, we need to win today. It doesn't matter who's out there now. Again, I can say what I want about Xhaka, about Partey, about this guy, about that guy, about Eddie, about Laka. This is it now, you know. You've got to make it count. Arteta, you signed off on all of this. Edu, you signed off on this. The transfer market's been and gone. I simply don't care what you try to do. You know, I know Arteta done the bravado thing, tried to save face, make out that there's only a select few amount of players that can improve our team, which I don't know where I sit on that. I don't just want to bring people in because they're better than what we have, the bars on the floor. I don't want to sign people for the sake of it. And I, and I understand that. But at the same time, you know, to make out that our squad is perfect and people are doing us a favour, joining us is laughable, really and truly. So, you know, it's just aimed at saving face. At the, at the time, like I said, I don't care if Arteta is, if it's Arteta's fault we didn't bring people in, Eddie's fault we didn't bring people in, or Cronkay's. Fundamentally, no one come in. You're betting on guys with two goals from open play to score your goals. You know, like Eddie's played 50 minutes in the league, so no matter what Arteta says, the numbers don't lie. You don't necessarily believe in him. I hope he goes on a purple patch so we don't speak about that. This, you know, you need to get top six. You can't really say we're wholeheartedly going to get top six. You need to keep fighting for top four. Smash the like button and if you haven't, people, if every one of you hit the like button, we'd be 40 off our target, people. Uh, unexpected high bills due if you haven't. Again, 
Conte lost his first home game since 2020 yesterday. It's true. But to be fair, Spurs would do that, you know. It's a bit like under Emre. People were saying Spurs were back and things. And I know I'm never going to want to hear that as an Arsenal fan and definitely not you as a Spurs Chester United fan. But um, G1, it's all love. But I'm an Arsenal fan. Post Wenger, I've seen us go on some stinky unbeaten runs and Conte was doing that. Luck ran out. Now, fortunately, VAR was uh, was 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 on Southampton's side, although one of the goals that's for Spurs should have been disallowed anyways because there was a foul in the build-up. It is what it is, really. And this is where I, I look at Arsenal again. The reality is, you know, I just uh, you have a chance. Do I think we've got enough talisman in this team? Do I think we have a goal scorer in this team, regardless of what statistics might say? Nobody in this team has has a, has a history of scoring goals. Do I think we've necessarily got the most experience? Do I believe I, I believe in about nine of the starting eleven? I believe in about eleven, about about five, about nine of the twenty-five man squad with a couple of other names, people. Um, so again, I want to be proven wrong, but I'm looking at what can give us the advantage in this running. I'm not too sure. We need to capitalise. And at the same time, Mr Waffle, you're not living up to your name because you're right. You know, teams can drop points left, right and centre. We need to be able to take advantage of such, which last time we had an opportunity, simply put, we didn't do it, you know. But for what it's worth, I can't remember the last time we capitalised on teams around us in the league that drew or lost. I don't see where the goals are coming from. Our goals are coming from guys that are still learning to score. Smith Rowe's our top goal scorer, got more goals than, than Cristiano Ronaldo. You know, certain teams brought through Ronaldo, brought back Ronaldo to get bopped at Burnley. Beating Burnley away at home isn't for everyone. Same way beating Southampton at our, at home isn't for everyone. I've got to get them in before before Wolves give it to us at, um, in, in the evening. But um. I don't know what gives us the advantage, man. What I hope is that, you know, Dubai galvanised. I know what I hope is that Arteta has a degree of urgency because he doesn't want embarrassment. What I hope is that forget Arteta and Arsenal. Some of you, some of these players, whether it's through age or ability, you haven't played in the Champions League. There's an opportunity for you to do that. There's an opportunity for you to be in Europe. There's an opportunity for you to just have decent seasons. You know, I'm not going to praise you for getting Europe because you two finish back to back eighth, you know, if you get your role pop. But if you're the first part of the first team that helps us get champs, that's a big W, you know, but you have to go out and seize it. And I don't know if we want that. I think we buckled. I don't think the club truly, truly in their heart wants top four. That's just me. I think they'd like top six. And we're assuming that we found this middle ground already where I've said, you know, just a just a few weeks ago, certain Arsenal fans and a certain Arsenal midfielder were looking at Liverpool and, and Chelsea. But you know, you've got us, United, Spurs, West Ham, Wolves. I'm definitely I don't know where Leicester is, but defo, there's five, six teams. Someone's got to miss out. Boy, hit the likes whilst you're here, man. D man, I appreciate you. You was locked on Twitch as well. Come on, Crystal Ball. Where do I think I've seen that name before? Was that in power? Transfigured life. DG, hope you enjoyed the Spurs game yesterday. I did. Hope today's even better. Good morning. Good morning right back at you, man. You lot gas me. Where's my manners? I didn't even gas you lot. Like G1 has said, yeah, man, get the likes up. Let's start off the stream strong. Marcel, you know, we've got one thing I love about this place. We've got Arsenal fans. I see a couple Spurs fans. Unfortunately, you know, you've got great, you lot have great taste in content creators, not so much in football clubs. Marcel and G1, Liverpool and United fans, respectively. Marcel has said, big up, man, like DG. That Wolves versus Arsenal game should be an intriguing one, interesting as a neutral. Bro, I think it's, I, I personally, in my heart, I think we might lose today, but I'm hoping for victory. I'm hoping the game isn't ex as exciting as definitely Newcastle, Everton, definitely Aston Villa, Leeds United. Big up everyone that was on Twitch that watched that with me. I hope it's not exciting. Don't worry, we'll be laughing at you lot tonight. Hope, hope to God, man. Make sure you're not here on Friday if that's the case, if that's not the case. Hope to see Nketiah pick up his phone today. Look, boy, the hope, hope is charged. Hope is charged. Really, you know. He's saying he's a gallus and you go on you go on his snap. He's got hella girls. He's subscribed to hella girls. He not, no, no one's added him back, man. When the phone when the phone needs to ring, it's and it matters. That line is not ringing. Big up DJ in the nation. Just wanted to wish everyone more life. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't surrender. Keep well, everyone. Come on, K. Right back at you, man. 100%. Is there an argument for Pepe getting a shot at striker? Ah. Stuff alone. Um, Lacazette first, just because of what Lacazette gives you minus the goals. If something happens to Lacazette, I'm trying to hear Martinelli. If something happens to Martinelli, then I'm entertaining Pepe as a false nine. I'm not here for the editing unless Eddie wakes up and 
I don't know what Buki potions or what Ray and Effie drank, but he becomes a mad goal scorer and goes on a purple patch. Joe will look inspired this at Newcastle. It's a myth. At least with Lacazette, you know he can link up, play, bring other people in. At least with Martinelli, you know he's going to be here long term. He's someone that's going to be able to play on the left as a striker, as a false nine or an out and out nine, as a left winger, as a right winger. There's, you know, they talk of conversation of contracts, but at least he's here for Eddie. Pff, Best case scenario is putting him in the shop window, but you you know if he signs for a British club, he gets thingy. We get uh, is it tribunal? We get some piece where he's made seventy five appearances for this club and won an FA Cup. I'd love I'd love to assume he's made substantial. He's, he's done this thing in it, and he's going to get a decent couple of mil for us. But there's no benefit to playing Eddie. Respectfully, Ed, the rickettiest thing is I do think Eddie's other aspects of his game are developing. But right now, seventeen games where I need to, this is the one point of the season you need assurances. I'm not sure. I, I, you know, there's not really, historically you could say a but I can't look at the team and say, boom, you're going to get the goals from now to the end of the year. You know, you're going to be my guy in midfield from now to the end of the year. Because I like Partey. I don't think Xhaka's a bad player, but I don't know what I'm going to get game to game with you two. So how can I comment on 17 games? I don't know what I'm going to get from Laka and Eddie. Base level, I think I'm going to get a, a six out of 10 from Laka with the, the, the work rate and that, but I don't know. And I like Partey, Laka and these things, you know. I don't know what I'm going to get from a couple of them man, as well. The only ones that, if you put a gun to my head, I say, I be everyone can have bad games. I believe in Ramsdale. I believe in Tierney. If Tommy Asu's fit, I believe in Tommy Asu. I believe in Gabriel. I believe in Ben White. Not, si not quite to these man's level, but I believe in Ben White. And obviously, with the discount of them guys being young, the young bulls, Martinelli, Smith Rowe, Saka, I like Odegaard as well, but that's about nine or so players out of an 11 potential starters. That's whatever amount of players I've said out of a 25-man squad. You know, whatever Mikel Arteta has said, whether these guys should have went or should have stayed for depth is ne neither here nor there. The market is closed. To me as a fan, at base level, you're telling me everyone in that squad, whether they're going to play no minutes, one minute, or every game, when their time comes, in whatever role, they can stand up to be counted. So I have to judge you accordingly. As much as I can get at Eddie and Lacquer, I have to judge you because you're the one. You didn't sell them for whatever reason. You might be you hear rumours you tried to sell one, personal terms. You've bet on them. Two goals from open play in recent weeks between them. I think three Premier League goals between them. They're all lackers, in it? Eddie, 50-odd minutes. Cool. I can get at them until I'm blue in the face. And last time you checked my skin colour, we'll be here all day, innit? But that's what you've done. You and Arte, you and Edu have told me them two in midfield are your midfielders with the exception of a young Lokonga. Okay, cool. So if Lokonga at the business end of the season, being a young bull makes mistakes, that's cool. But know what you're doing. Tavares, know what you're doing. Midfield, any consequences that have, that have been happening in midfield, I've said it for years, I've got no sympathy for anything because we should have addressed this. If the strikers don't score goals, I can get at them. But what can I expect? Because we're really putting people in boots they can't fill. You know, there's 17, 18 games. I can't say a striker's going to get seven to 10 goals here. There's not a goal scorer here. There's not someone who controls the midfield here. We've got our defenders, but we need to remember Ben White and Gabriel, they're still learning and they're due clangers. You know, Tommy Asu is human. He's going to have a bad game. He can't be here forever. Tierney started off the season slow and found himself again. Ramsdale does a couple of bookie things and he's, Ramsdale's due, uh, at some point, he's due a little bit of negative form. It can't, you know, it never goes all the way up. We've seen it with our young players. So we need a lot to go right to get top four or whatever. This is what you lot have bet on. And it takes big balls. It, again, pause. If it works, big you lot up. If it don't, boy. And like I said, the top four would have been the dream. I think it is a mischance. If you find yourself in top six, I could say fair enough. All right. If man don't get top six, boy, there should be question marks. There shouldn't be talk of a new deal. But one does wonder when the guy comes out and says there's no targets for this season, respectfully, it doesn't matter where you finish unless you do something really calam at this football club, which I don't know. Boy. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst, man. It's what it is, man. Like, <laughs> Gunners should be fox hunting today, but the foxes will be the brave ones. Even you know Wolves are going to give it to you a lot later. Wolves are going to give us a game. But you, man, Drew, though. He bought Varane and that to get to get to get done by Weghouse or whatever his name is. Swear done. Varane get you. That's what Varane signed for to get packed. You sign you re-sign Ronaldo to get packed by Ben Mee. Jada Sancho has played well against Middlesbrough and Burnley, and it counts for effing nothing, mate, because you drop points. Agenda lives on. Them Love Island Utes there. Now I'm playing, man. I like Sancho. He's beating the allegations. But you lot, Spurs Chester United, allow me, man. It was power, great show. They're saying this is a big rich town.
Yeah, I just come mm, 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 mm. bright like city like I gotta make it. This is mm, mm, yeah. all right. Let me stop, man. <laughs> oh man, legal or legal, baby. I gotta make it. Hey, the Tommy one's decent as well. Previously on power, anyways. Previously on ghost. <laughs> Sorry, I right, Alfie, big up, big up to you. Let's stay with remain professional. Do you think? Get top four would I think you mean do you think getting top four would skip steps in the process and do you think they would want to do that? I mean, as long as you're not, there's a difference between skipping steps and taking shortcuts. As long as you recognize that obviously if Arsenal get top four, we were punching, we'd have an elite season. We're not a champion. On the best of days when Arsenal qualified for the champs, we was meaty. We need to kind of fix up, but it's a better place to be in. I think the club are scared because I think most other clubs, without knowing the variables, you know, we tried to bring players in and all this tosh. I think any other club, if that was United in that situation, if that was Chelsea in that situation, if that was, I don't know if they'd ever be in it, but if it was Liverpool or City, I can't really say Spurs. But I think if anyone said, oh, boom, let's bring in a striker. Let's just bring in a new signing that we can to, to get things going, in it. Even be, beyond that, the work towards what we're doing in January should have started last summer. But in hindsight, maybe, you know, we was never trying to do much this summer beyond get. I mean, win, winter period beyond getting people gone. And we were going to revisit targets next summer. You hear the talk around Telemann's agent for next summer, being at London Coley about a summer move, whether these things happen or not. So I think they're scared of it. I think there's a complacency with assuming we're going to end up top six. Now, that's just me as a fan without knowing all the variables. I don't think our terror is complacent. I think the, the border... And this is the thing, man. When you've got one guy kind of leading it, you know, Arteta is getting a bit like, it's getting a bit like Arsene Wenger for him here. It's getting a bit like Klopp and Pep in that, you know, he's he, he's becoming a larger than life manager. And I'm not saying I'm necessarily against that, but you've got to earn your chops. I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm not against Arteta, but it's, it just feels like you're being handed a lot. You know, there's a lot to critique and praise, but it feels like you're being handed a lot and rewarded for stuff that, other managers were killed for and really it doesn't it's just oh it feels like we're putting all our eggs in this basket where are we you know are we doing this arsenal thing or this arteta thing i want a top midfielder in the summer i just want consistency man i don't ask for much morning all big up the nation big up dg yourself bro hope you get that 50k soon journey to 50k on twitch i mean on youtube one day 50k on Twitch, but 10k on Twitch. Appreciative to everyone who's following on both. Make sure you're following on both. You and Curtis are the only ones I rate with this. Appreciative to that, man. There's plenty of good content, Chris. I think it's going to be a goalless draw as both teams struggle to score, probably. <sighs> but it's just, I just see the, the first and second balls off the, the, you know, the movement. I don't know, man. It's crazy, man. There's a bad mood around the club at the moment. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say there's a bad mood. You know, even though we haven't won this year, I wouldn't say there's necessarily a bad mood. It can get toxic. It can get long. But I wouldn't say there's necessarily a bad mood. You know, there's a bad mood around the club at the moment. We lack the. We highlight the lack of goals, but we've gotten to this point with the same players. Will it last? Is the question. Maybe not. But let's hope we kick on again. Hope so, man. I don't like hope though. Hope is a subjective word, man. I have all the hope in the world as long as we do the active steps proactively, you know. Praying, it's like just randomly praying, bro. If you just randomly pray to God, you know, whatever, however you pray, I'm pretty sure God's not God's not going to help you unless you help yourself. You can't just pray for something, you know. You need to go out there and do other things and then things happen for you. With United and Spudge dropping points, we need to make the best out of it. I ain't accepting anything less than three points tonight. For the very fact that we ain't won this year, this year I need that. Crazy. No, I didn't get tickets. But if you know someone with a ticket for Skilly, you're mad. Shout me. Shout me. I, I Sandra, shout me. Anyone that's got a ticket, don't try to shag me. You know, in fact, two tickets. In fact, let's bring the whole gang. If you can get one to five tickets or one to ten tickets, I've got all the kiddies ready to go in it. Come on, line that. Skilly concert, you're mad. Wait till Skin comes London. I need that, man. I need that. 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 Diana Lauren or Effie. I listen, I don't know. I, I I don't know. Everyone's beautiful in their own way. I, I don't know, man. I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's asking me to pick between MSN in it. It's like asking Messi Neymar Suarez in it. Everyone's wavy. <laughs> you like the chocolate, darling, still. But <laughs> Everyone, man, everyone, 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 everyone. It's all like, you see me, it's about a connection. I need to know the personalities. I can't just go off skin value. 
You think Saka will sign a new contract? I don't know, Danny, what Donny's on, man. I don't know, man. If I was Saka, the longer it runs down, the more desperate Arsenal get, the more money you're making for yourself. What chance do you, do you give Saka to stay if you don't, guys don't get Champions League? I still think it's quite high. You know, I think Saka, I don't think Champions League is hinging on Saka staying. I think Saka is going to sign a new deal, but he could still leave. At one point, you're going to want to know your plans. I feel, you know, probably not so much at Liverpool. You know, as much as I feel Arsenal are poor and Saka's probably doing us a favour, I do think he could leave and play for other teams. As If Klopp and Pep asks for you, for me, you go. But let's be real, there's no expectation on Saka at Arsenal. You know, there's a little criticism, but there's no expectation. You go to Liverpool and them clubs there in City, they're man expecting goals and assists and numbers and things. You kind of got, uh, you're kind of free from them speculations. I know we missed the penny at the Euros, but that sort of thing is going to follow you. Look at Grealish. Grealish can't breathe without someone saying, "Ah, oh, you cost 100 million." You know, that benefit. You're playing week in, week out. You're playing in a less pressurized environment. You're, you're you know, you're a bit like Arteta. You're kind of being left to your own devices. To de got a number seven already. Bit like Arteta, you're being left to your own devices to develop with no real expectations currently. Obviously, he's kind of free to just become a 10 goal, 10 assist man. So, I do think there's a chance Saka goes. I think there's a chance he stays. I do think it's a bit of silly season with the rumors and things like that. But it all depends. I do think we'll commit Saka to a new deal. I don't know this just because he's in his early 20s, but I just feel the next one. You know, it's easy to do this now when you're in your mid 20s. This is why I take a pinch of salt with these young boys, Saka, Smith Rowe. You know, I love Arsenal, I want to be Arsenal for years. I don't doubt you do. But how you think in your early 20s when you are young, developing, just happy to be playing Premier League football is different from when you're 27, been around the block, want to win stuff. You know, how you might look at Aspilicueta. He just said it's completely irrelevant. But he said, when I came to Chelsea, man never had no family like that. Now I've got kids that would grow up in London and these things. It affects how you move. So, boy, all I would say is the system, you know. We I, we said it yesterday, Edu, I don't expect you to do everything in the summer because I don't know how good your team is, but the priorities, Saka New Deal, Martinelli New Deal, Smith Rowe, I'm um, not Smith Rowe, sorry, there's a next one, Saliba New Deal. Decide what you're doing with Pepe, who's contracted until 2024. Torreira's 2023, Gwendozi 2023, Leno 2023, uh, Maitland-Niles 2023, you know. Writing's kind of on the wall for a couple of them, so go and get top money, really, and truly. Torreira, it shouldn't be hard, you know. You're going to make less than what you did. He's doing all right at Fiorentina. I think he got sent off the other day. So there's a lot to do. And obviously, make sure you ideally get players in and get them in quickly, quick, quickly as well, if I'm completely honest with you. That's what that's what I would say. But it's almost an impossible job, you know. Do I think Arsenal are sitting there and drawing up targets for the summer? But much like us on the field, I very much get the vibe that, you know, we plan stuff. You know, we can plan stuff all week. But once spanners are thrown up, like you've seen in the January transfer market, just like on a football pitch, we struggle to, to, to react to that. So let's see, man. We best pull something off tonight. I don't want it, I don't want to have a bad January and a two-week break for nothing, but hey, what shall be, shall be, man. The future's already decided. Now it's down to us to go and seize it. We're only at 57 likes, even though there's 185 of you locked in. Come on, man. Appreciate the super chat. I'm on the YouTube screen, so I can't bring it up at this moment. You said Saka will probably leave if he gets shown spreadsheets and figures like Van Persie. But I can't begrudge a man for leaving. United are following Telemans and can sign him for three or 40 million. Talks over a new contract at Leicester came to nothing. Exactly. But the thing about Telemans, as much as I want him and you'd be good at United, when you look past the hype, is he the right fit? Because I'm not, I, I think he's wavy, I, you know, on that. But I just feel in terms of consistency, a lot of what Arsenal fans get vexed about, Xhaka Telemans does it. Now, Telemans, for me, is a better player, great potential, but he's naive defensively. He loses stray balls in the midfield. He's given away some penalties this season. He gives away cheap fouls in dumb, in dumb positions. His game management's a bit shaky, like you saw against Spurs, trying a difficult pass in the late stages of the game. So in terms of consistency, he and he'll always get better in that, is it the right one, you know? Basuma better than Douglas Luiz. Probably got more to his game, but I'd probably prefer Douglas Luiz. If I'm honest with you, um, to be to be honest to be honest with you, but Arsenal need to get one of them. We spoke about 2023s again. I hope Arsenal have their Plan B targets, but you need to go around. For me, you need to you need to ask schools. Well, go on for Nevers. You're probably not on it, but he's contracted until contracted until 2023. What's he saying? Tell him it's the same. Basuma the same. I'd probably say Douglas Louise to me feels. I don't know why. I don't have anything to go off, but it just feels that that one there is the most attainable. Maybe it's because City and Arteta and him have crossed paths at City. Maybe it's because Villa know he's probably gone. Villa are looking at Basuma. Maybe they say, you know what, give us a little change for, for Louise. 
We'll take that, go grab Pesuma. It just feels like that's the the, simp, the easiest one to get. But for me, actually, if I was being a spoiled kid, I'd like three midfielders. I would like another six and I'd like two eights. I would feel if we were a certain club, you'd bring in two midfielders. Same way you've got Partey, who's the big bro and the guy for now. You you have Lokonga, who's short, medium and long term. I think you should get that number eight that can replace Yaka and immediately improve us and raise the level so that Odegaard, Smithrow, Martinelli, Saka, whoever's going to be the nine can stay further forward. But also you need that young that young tug that can play if we want two eights or play instead of him or be that sort of guy. And I say another six because you've seen Lokonga at times he shouldn't be playing because of it just losing his form. Sometimes there's been suspensions and injuries or absences where party, et cetera, are concerned. And sometimes you, we might go into a game where we need to play Lokonga and Parte, but we need another six to come on. I don't think we have enough options. We have options. They're just not levels, in my opinion. Like, I'm not convinced in no one in our central mid. I like what Lokonga can be, but isolated to this season, he's shaky. I like Parte. But it's good, bad and the ugly. One step forward, 10 steps back, 10 step, 20 steps forward. It's the illusion of movement. Xhaka, we've been down this road, you know. That anytime the team's ingrained on people like that, you're going to get mixed results because you get mixed performances, respectfully, to Xhaka. You know, El Nene is El Nene. He's not levels, respectfully. He does his thing. I know fans want to wank over the Old Trafford performance and whatnot. He's a good guy, loves the club, you know. Unfortunately, he didn't get a move to Leeds, Newcastle, Galatasaray, or Fenerbahce that his agent said in the summer, but they're mealy. And collectively together, they're all rubbed. Xhaka and Party is probably the best one. That's rubbed. I'd rather just play Lokonga and Party because they're here for the long term, but that's rubbed. There's no progressive progressing in the midfield there. And you're overcompensating on the 10 and everybody dropping deep like we do already. You know, and for me, I lose myself with this because. Arteta, you come up through last year, bro. You've played under Arsene Wenger, fam. You've learned at Pep. I'm sorry, I can't take the lack of midfield question marks. Edu, you as an invincible midfielder. Forget all of that. You can't look at this midfield and think he's 30. I don't care that Guendouzi and Torreira are gone. Different reasons. I, obviously, I would like them to be here, but we're at where we're at with them. It's the knock-on effect now. You need bodies. We've known we're light in midfield. You know, you cannot stand outside, see little drops of rain come in, hear the thunderstorms, and then when it starts pissing down, act surprised why you're wet and cry. You you should have known. Get a jacket, find shelter, get an umbrella, or just stay, read the weather forecast or watch it and stay in your yard. I don't know, man. Crazy one. Love for you lot making this, this live stream. Well, it is interesting conversations, man. It isn't sold up. What do you mean? Skilly's thing is sold out, man. Might have two selling you. Hey, don't tell them it's DG. Don't try and bump up them prices. I'll pay handsome. I'll pay a handsome fee for all of them, but you get it, man. I'm not mug. Right, you lot, someone needs to call the holy police. You lot do too much, man. So get laying down for all the women out there. I don't know what that means. Disclaimer, you know. I don't know. Saka had a great growth spurt, man. Would you take Jimenez and David in the summer at what price? Assuming Jonathan David, yeah, I'd probably stay clear of Jimenez. I, I, yeah, it's a myth. I remember watching your videos when you were sitting in the park getting harassed by pigeons. Top cat, the good old pigeons, eh? I wonder what they're doing. Do you know what? It wasn't even them that bugged me as much, you know. It was it wasn't even the nitties. It was the people looking at me like I'm doing a mat, like I'm smoking crack in front of them. Like, what's, what's he recording? What's he? Why is he recording? He's doing weird stuff. Like, what's going on? Crazy man. I thought Telemans was mobile. He, he's kind of he's kind of rubbed. I would take him, but like I don't like when fans, not just Arsenal fans, but we do this. To, man, start moving like people haven't got faults. People are invincible. And then when you're linked with someone, start putting them. It's like with Isaac. Man, I'm acting like Isaac is a 20-league goal consistent man doing it for five years. He's still learning. John McGinn would be a dream, man. Just does his job, gets in the trenches, mucks in. Bro, look at Villa's midfield. They had a function in midfield. Coutinho, obviously, the eye, the, the, the cherry on top of the cake. Ra young Ramsey, again, Southgate needs to look at him working real hard in midfield. John McGinn doing the less illustrious stuff, man. No one's going to remember John McGinn's def diving defensive head off to put out for a corner. Decent little player. So Yun Chu's just he does his thing, but he's just bare hands on and fresh with it. Oh, oh, sorry, I didn't even see that, man. G1. Sorry, man. Bit of small bit of hope there. 
DG, what happened to that Daniel Ek takeover hype? It just seemed to fade it away like a good haircut. Bro, well, he's Spotify is it's the Spotify camp new now, isn't it? They've got they've got a sponsorship with Barca, so yeah, he ain't trying to hear us. Big up my beige and tugs in. Shout out Barbados. I think for us at the moment, what you think about James Wood Prowse would like him. He's a bit like Teeny and, and, and Ramsdale. You can tell them and Jay just wake up, do their job, and go yard, man. You know, the most exciting thing Wood Prowse probably does is just go for a walk with his dogs and go yard. It looks like Arsenal trying to eradicate them and them. Handsome fee. Listen, handsome fee, bro. Like, handsome fee. You don't mean finesse. I'm taking my phone outside to listen to you while doing the garden. You picked a perfect day to do the garden. But yeah, I hope we win 1 0, Joanne. I don't know, man. No, don't say that. We're going to we're gonna win. Let's put it into existence, man. Hit the like button if you want Arsenal to win, man. Arteta has confirmed Arsenal will open talks with Sako of extending his new deal. Our desire is to keep Bakayo as long as possible because we are really happy he's part of our club. I mean, like you said, the water is wet, broski. You should be doing that. You should be doing that. But Kyle, come on, man. Don't do this to me, Saka, man. The only one, you know, Saka. I, you know what? As an Arsenal fan, seeing Henri leave, seeing all the man them leave, it, I'm not shocked with anything. And I wouldn't say Saka will hurt, but I just, I, I'd want you to go and do well. But it's like, Saka, don't leave yet, man. Don't leave yet, man. This relationship's just started, bro. We've just, we've got something good here, man. Just, it's tough times. Just. You got to fight, 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 fight for this love. Or whoever said that one. And the heaven is a hiding Come on, Saka, man. Like, Martinelli, I've just admitted one day I, I'm going to see you in La Liga, innit? Gabriel sent a half. I think you're busting out soon. Odegaard, I think, I don't think your, your, your story in relation to Real Madrid and them things there is done yet. Do you rate Gravin Betch? Yeah, still young, a lot to work on. He's probably going to keep it moving. From Ajax, you know, I think he's contracted until 2023. If Saka's gone, get Rafinha. If only if it was that easy. If I was Rafinha, respectfully, I wanted to like him anyways. Would you come to Arsenal? You know, would you wait? You're getting linked with other. You're getting linked with Liverpool. In it. I don't know if they're still onto you with the Lewis Dyer stuff, but it is what it is. Should we start reading some of these articles, people? In Konku or Yuri Tillemans? Sorry, who would you prefer on current form in Konku, bro? To be fair with you. But yeah, on that, let's look at what some of these articles are saying. Arsenal Bakayo Saka says Hart was always set on joining Gunners as a youngster despite Tottenham trial. I hear that, man. Arsenal was the one who always wanted to go. I hear that everybody said, listen, man, seen that bare times, but I need to see the new deal, bro. You you spent time at Watford. There's pictures there. I mean, all the best, you know, they're all they're going to go for everyone. Chelsea were onto him. I think Arsenal was always the one I wanted to go. It seemed like they had a lot of faith in their youth and there was a clear pathway when you could see the players coming from Hayland to London, Coley. And my dad was also also really believed in the project and he loved Wenger. I think Arsenal was the club in the hearts of my family, so we chose them. Wenger's done it again. Sorry, people. You know, I'm one of them. I like them agendas still. I think from the moment you sign the education at Hayland, you start to know the history of Arsenal. You know which games are the most important. We obviously knew the derby and the rivalry with Tottenham. So I'd say from the point I signed, the coaches made it known before every game against Tottenham how much it means. And there was always extra excitement around that game. I hear that, Saka. But where's the talk about the new deal, my brother? He spoke about scoring. That goal was another important goal because before that, the team wasn't in the best of moments. And I'm going and going into that game, we knew how much it could turn around our season, and it um and it would be for the fans as well. I think maybe since that game, we've only lost one game at the Emirates, which was City. I think from that game, we set we really set the tone at home. I think I've taken a step forward, but I think also the team has taken a step forward. Football's a team sport, and as long as everyone is doing well, I think it makes things easier individually. I'd say we're on good form and really, and it really helps me. The team is so fluid. We're building chemistry, a lot of chemistry. Saka, we ain't won in 2022, but it's you in it. So I'm not going to go with it in it. Just going to, you get it. You said it, so it's right. I love you, Saka. You are the love of my life. I love you, Saka. I let you bang my, not quite, but you get me. It is what it is. It's just about understanding the situation you're in and where the space is, where your teammates and how you can score. There's always on my mind, when I get the ball in the final third, how am I going to create a chance or how am I going to get a shot away? I mean, Saka, let's get some power in them shots and then we're gone. Mm -hmm. This is where I get scared, man. I start talking about the, the, the Champions League. Uh, you get me? We ain't got that really, you know. 
It's like talking to Gally and they're asking me about Range Rovers and that. Last time I checked, I ain't got the keys for that. Big man, what are we doing? He spoke about the Champions League. He said, playing in the continent's top tier tournament next season would be a dream for Saka, but he admits he'll have to work hard to make this happen. I think the Champions League creates so many special nights and it's a dream for me still to experience one of them and hopefully many more of them. Liverpool's probably the club for you then or maybe even Chelsea because they're technically the Champions League holders. And I mean, for me, if I'm cynical, I wonder how Saka and some of these players that feel like that. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. The best players want to play in the best tournaments. It's lovely for me to see Saka say this to go with. It's different. But Martinelli saying he wants number 14. You know, even Granite Xhaka looking at second and third. You know, whether you rate Xhaka or not, whether you rate the players or not, clearly they've got ambition. But then I have to look at what's the manager's ambition? Because did he press to bring in players? Which I think he did. But if he said he didn't, then devil's advocate and, and that. But it would make me look at the club. Everyone, no one's an idiot. We're honest football fans. You lot are at work. I'm well, technically sat here as well. Um, I wonder what the footballers who are in the situation, you know, you might, I'm sure they want to hear the job. Yeah. I mean, look, Bob, you lot are always at home when Champions League's going on. So I know you lot want it. What are you lot thinking of the club's business in January then? Wait, I mean, you kept it real short with that though, but scary. I'd say that game really lifted us in relation to the derby. Not just us, it lifted everyone around the club from us all the way to the fans. It made us and then believe that we can do some special things this season. I'm not too sure I believe that, Saka, but you said it, so it's cool. And it gave everyone the confidence again in us that I think some people lost. Ooh, confidence is subjective, my bro. You know, you need to do it for a while. I got, I got confidence in you, bro. I ain't got confidence in everybody. They'll all get my support, but boy, you know, Dirk, it's crazy. Away from Saka, I mean, Douglas Louise watch was yesterday. It's Ruben Nevers' watch today. Arsenal lining up Douglas Louise transfer in summer after Aston Villa rejected three bids for the midfielder in January. Uh, the 23-year-old obviously is contracted until 2023. Doesn't look like he's signing a new deal and all of these sort of things, man. Hit the like button if you haven't. Big up South London's finest. Um, transfer guru Fabrizio Romano said Arsenal need a midfielder. They wanted a midfielder in January. Okay. Also, because El Nene will leave the club, so they need a player in that position. Douglas Louise is one to watch in the summer. Not only for Arsenal, they have interest, but I'm not convinced he will extend his contract with Aston Villa. So he could be a big name on the market. So keep an eye on Douglas Louise, not only for Arsenal, but they have his name on the list. That's great. And he will obviously make 100 appearances by the time his time is done, really. Pardon me. And to be fair, I know he wants to keep them. Letting Douglas Louise go, bringing in Basuma could be good. Bit excessive calling for Zuma to go jail and that. Uh, Arroyo and Gavi could be signing new deals and five players could quit Man United in the summer, shake up, including Paul Pogba. Pepe in last chance saloon. Arsenal 72 million signing, running out of time to save Arsenal career. Let's see what Charles Watcher said. Respectfully, Charles, if this is just your opinions, it's a myth. With the amount of games, I think this is Arteta, we're having, there's not enough room when he was quizzed at the first half of the season. Nico needs more opportunities to show what he can do. And in the last games, he hasn't had them. But I have to try to make the decision based on what I see every day. And I mean, I, un, unhappy players are part of it, but I can't lie. As much as people get at, at Arteta, you know, he could use part of Pepe, um, Pepe a bit more. But it's a results-driven game. For me, yesterday, last season, sorry, man said yesterday. I can't remember it like yesterday. I saw too much up and down. Too, it felt like it was Sunday league. Everybody needs to get a game. Danny hasn't played. His son, his dad's paid his fees. You know, I don't think you can have it. Everyone can play and get results and whatnot. You know, Saliba, for me, should be part of the first team. But I understood him going out on loan. If he plays and makes mistakes, fans are going to get upset. You can't have it every way. You know, when I look at, ironically, it's funny how life works. Because I was about to mention Ainsley. When I look at Pep pay Ainsley, I can get Arteta's lack of use for them that other people is using but at a point, and we're, you know, we're fighting for top four, we've made the right decisions, you know, let's be honest, Pepe doesn't get in the team ahead of Saka and Martinelli unless it's a sub subs bench thing, you know, Ainsley Maitland now should not be starting ahead of Xhaka and Partey, let's be real, you know, I'd rather Ainsley get the minutes but he's not as progressive as Xhaka, not to praise Xhaka, he can't do what Partey is doing so I do like the fact that we've settled on an 11. I'm sure he'd like to play Rob Holding a bit more. My problem is just the fact that Pepe is just not off the bench. Even technically, Smith Rowe's lost his place because we can't play 12 players. So I do think fans are not necessarily always fair. With the amount of... Well, sorry, have we said this already? Sorry, people. Let's scroll the way down. 
I think Pepe might be in last chance saloon, said said uh, uh, um said Ian Wright. Up to this point, Arteta has not used Pepe in any way that makes me think he's got love for him. He doesn't. You know, he doesn't give you consistency over 90 minutes like Saka. I do think Arteta has improved him and made him an all-rounder. I do think Pepe can be used and should be used and definitely is going to be used. I'd rather play Pepe than, you know, Eddie and Ketia. You know, it looked like Pepe might look to make a move in January with a Bamian's thing. That was a myth. You know, he's contracted until 2024. Forget the, you know, we could afford to let his contract stuff run for another year. If I'm Pepe, I'm keeping it moving respectfully. You know, we've struggled to score goals, people. Even this season, having been in and out of the team, he averages 2.8 shots per game, which is more than Saka Smith from Martinelli and Lacazette. Not really the achievement for Lacazette because Gabriel takes more shots than him. He also averages 0.58 assists per 90 and 2.1 chances created. So again, he's definitely not a terrible player. Frustrating, yeah. Definitely better. Definitely can be used. That's my only problem with it. You know, in 2021, when he scored 16 goals in 47 games, he was finishing, he's finishing, he was finishing 17.8% of his chances. This season, that's plummeted because he's played less. Again, Pepe, it's not going to work out. He's not going to be the talisman, but that don't mean you can't use him, especially at this point in the season. Bro, it's not even a 70 million fee, but anyone that was watching Pepe knew Arsenal were getting zanged, bro. He had a very exceptional 18 months, standout 18 months. He was never that. So big up Leo for finessing us. They owe us, innit? You need to give us some peace for Jonathan David. Again, El Nene, we spoke about this, but his agent once again has said Mikel Arteta blocked El Nene from leaving in January. Well, if you wanted to leave with interest, you would have left, man, but... It is what it is. Um, again, I'm not going to read this because we spoke about it. And we know Leon, Marseille and Valencia are all looking at him. He had offers from Leeds, Watford and Newcastle, as well as Galatasaray. And there was rumours of Fenerbahce people. Bro, Lacazette's never in the goal, bro. Lacazette, we overcompensate with what Lacazette does because he doesn't do that and score goals, which two things can be true. What's this? We've been linked with Slavio again, people, which would be a good signing for us. The young 17-year-old couldn't bring him in until he's 18. Um, I don't think there's any common sense to this. We had some inquiries from clubs abroad, but none of the offers interested us. If that happens, the club will evaluate it. Salvinho has agent has contract with us, has a contract with us until December 2023. We have a great relationship with Salvio's agents. It's not ideal, but it's the market that establishes who the targets are and what the price is. Salvio is under our control, not only because of the contract, but because of the relationship we have. Slavio's agent believes that with his client struggling for regular game time at Atletico, a permanent move away might be the best. Bring him. I'm sure Martinelli knows. I mean, Brazilian bias. He's good in football manager, isn't it? So bring him through. Arsenal were keen on signing Dusan Vahovic before he joined Juventus from Fiorentina. Please shut up about this. Izak was linked. What's going on here? Reports from Spain had then suggested that Le Real felt well protected to retain the 22-year-old due to his 90 million release clause. Allegedly on Thursday, this, this might have changed. I'm trying to paraphrase people. Mondo Deportivo today said they've covered comments made by Sociedad Sporting Director. Despite Arsenal's clear interest in him, there was no approach. So we never put money on the table. We tried to come to it. We, we probably saw that it wasn't worth it really and truly. So that's a brazy one. What's, what, what is this? Director keen to sign Aston Villa player. Efforts already being made. Sorry, this wasn't for us. This was from my last. This was from my last stream on Twitch. Uh, so yeah, that seems to be Arsenal's transfer speculation. What's going on in Arsenal's? Let's set this to the last hour. What's come out in the last hour? I mean, obviously, our desire is to keep Bakayo as long as possible because we are really, really, we are really happy. He's part of our club, our DNA. He's growing, he's maturing. His importance in the team is unquestionable, and we want to keep the best talent. That's for sure. And Arsenal and United not getting much bang for their buck on signings and selling them on. Uh, what's going on here? Is there any is there a new press conference thing? I mean, like a shout out to you. And again, I spoke about needing everything to go right, people. This is we've made our bed. This is what they're they're gonna lie, they're gonna lie in in relation to you know the games we have left. Some of the things we have discussed about how we are going to approach the last 17 games, what we need to do to accomplish our objectives. The most important thing is that we're all on the same page. Focused and determined with the right belief and going game by game, we're focusing on what we have to do daily and the habits we need to install to get the level of performance that we need to win as much as possible. I trust the players, the quality that we have, the spirit, the togetherness that we have around the team and we can achieve what we want. 
We are going to need a high level of performance. We'll need our supporters on board. That will be so key. We're going to have a real game. But again, we can only go game by game. And there's 17 games, 17 different narratives. Some people are going to be the heroes one week and the villains the other. Such is with a young squad. All that matters is in May. So let's see what happens. So that's that. Obviously, people, don't forget to make sure you're here for Wolves. Arsenal, watch along later. DG, when's your preview out with the Wolves fan? It's out already. It's literally out. Shout out, Dave, for doing that. Let me confirm that it's there as well. I'm sure I pressed that. I pressed that button. Yeah, it's out. <laughs> it is literally out. There it is. I'll send you a link. DG, what's the difference between Pepe and Saka, in your opinion? Saka, I mean, I think he's made Pepe a bit of an all-rounder, but Saka is less likely to frustrate. I think Saka, Pepe is capable of doing some mad stuff, but over the 90 minutes, Saka's more likely to retain the ball, to link up better, probably has a better relationship with his right back. I think I actually think Pepe's improved dramatically defensively. Pep, Saka probably better than him defensively. In fact, no, I don't believe that, you know. I actually think Pepe is better than him because that's one thing I've, I, I think Saka's been switched off about. But I'd probably say that. I just think he, he Saka less frustrates less, isn't it? There's a lot of clarity. Pepe is up and down, up and down. We are now in a position where anything we add to the squad is creating debt. Pepe and Smith are on the bench is a sign that things are moving in the right direction. Let's focus on getting a certified 11 first, but yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, you don't really rate Pepe, man. I mean, Pepe, uh, sorry, Eddie's played 50-odd minutes in the league. It's going to improve. Hopefully, he does something. Out of all our midfielders here now on loan, Lokonga is the worst cap. <laughs> man, it's a DG karaoke this morning. Loving it. Get your request to trust, man. Tribute acts and that. Come on. As a Liverpool fan watching this, I believe you guys just need that one superstar player to raise the standards and attract better players that you guys can push on. Do your research, you know. I would say you're right. Because no one, respectfully to Salah, people are rating him, but no one was saying, yo, he's going to shake up Liverpool and that. It, hindsight's a wonderful thing. What you saw happen is what happened. But yeah, man, it's one of it's one of them ones. You're right, 100%. Yeah. Wood Prowse definitely has off games. Every player has off games. Come on. Only 96 likes. We're struggling, man. I told you, my services are being... All these 1130s, they're going to Twitch permanently very soon. Look, don't respect me. 1-1, one, one in my opinion, Gabriel scores for Arsenal. But we do need a W tonight. Want to see Pepe integrated to the team. Play Pepe as a centre forward today. Not sure I would do that today. Rather, Lacazette play through the middle and the young boys get in and around him. DG, big up my guy. You know your stuff. I appreciate that. You genuinely believe Lokonga is better than Xhaka, Partey, Gwendozi and Torreira. He's better than El Nene. You said everyone connected to the club. He's better than them. You know, he's a completely different player from Gwendozi. You know, we've already said Xhaka and I think I've answered your question in relation to Xhaka and Partey in relation to what I've said in the first half of this live stream. You're living up to your last name, Mr. Wild. I respect your work, DG. Appreciate that. Come on, man. Am I crazy or does Wood Prowse walk into every big six team but see? Yeah, you are. I don't think he's, he starts at Liverpool, personally. Starts at us, starts at United, starts for Spurs. But we haven't finished in the top six for the last two years, so we're out of that. I don't think he necessarily starts at Chelsea. Yeah, I don't think he starts at Chelsea. I think he could be in the squad and now I don't think he starts at Chelsea. Does he get ahead of... Would I play Wood Prowse ahead of Jorginho? Ahead of Kante, ahead of Kovacic, probably not if everybody's fit. Lokonga has the highest ceiling. I don't know about that. And I, respectfully, I don't even care about his ceiling. Like, oh, that, listen, have all the potential you want. It's what you're doing today. And I just feel these buzzwords in potential with, with footballers these days, this potential, potential business. Like, you have to realise stuff for today. One thing I didn't like, and again, you might you might see it, you know, I might be proven wrong in the future, but then Lakonga's talking about I'm an eight and a six. Brother, you're a six. You are a six. You don't even want the ball. You can't be an eight. Not here anyways. You're a six. We better win today. No excuses from Arteta. I don't want to hear it. 
have to see, man. Like, because I don't really have much faith in our ability to get Europe, but let's see what we can do, man. Really. It shook, but we'll see, man. What would your 11 be? How's Jim going? Do you just going good, man? You know, try to go three times a week. Probably the last one be tomorrow. What would be your 11 tonight, DG? Well, if everybody's fit, obviously, if not fit, I'd play Cedric ahead of, um, well, there's no one else in it. I'd play Cedric at right back. Ramsdale, Gabriel, Ben White, Tommy Asu with fit, Tini on the left hand side, Jacques Aparte, Martin Odegaard, Martin Elisaka, and Fingy Lacazette through the middle. No, I wouldn't go to a back three necessarily. I wouldn't necessarily. I, I hear the logic. You could try and cancel them out, but I wouldn't necessarily go for it. So, yeah, that's that, really. Former Norwich boss Alex Nils in advance talks to become the new Sunderland manager after Ray Keane turned down the opportunity to return. So he'd rather just sit on his sofa, sit on his ass on Sky Sports and criticise people. I hear it. I hear it. It's harder to do things. You know, shout out Gary Nev. He, he got one side of what being a real manager is like and said, you know, I'm just going to buy a football club and just chat shit. I hear it. Nothing else going on in the world of Arsenal. I mean, ain't no one really trying to watch Amir Khan versus Kelbrook. Too tired, done, man. Should, that fight should happen years ago. Tired. Crazy. Let's see what's going on. Doesn't seem like there's anything. I mean, yesterday we spoke about Mikel Arteta and Cole. Apparently, Arsenal are strongly interested in Yuri Telemans and the players prepared to leave Leicester. Leicester are willing to accept offers in the region of 35 million euros, million pounds, sorry, which is right up our street and United Street. But you then, you have to read between the lines. United are linked with him. Arsenal are linked with him. You know, how many times do you see in life a next team just gets thrown in that weren't, that weren't these two? So you need to, you know, it's very much a game of bargaining and things. We don't know if United genuinely want him or if Arsenal genuinely want him. Which they probably could say they do. Boy. I mean, both teams. Telemans plays for both teams. Which is crazy. It's crazy. Obviously, Zuma deserves a lot of the praise, he, the criticisms he gets, but people don't understand why this is deeper than that. You know, leather companies that make football boots are cancelling this sponsorship. Didn't do such with John Terry or Suarez. You know, Pete, certain fashion brands that use forced labour, sweatshops, people that shoot, you know, shoot foxes, you know, people that go to zoos. If we're going to do the morality police with animals, which right is right and wrong's wrong, boy, boy, very dangerous precedent being set. There's some hella coons out here, man. A black man is saying crying about racism from a G wagon with six figures minimum in the bank and comparing it to the animal abuse is crazy. Are you a dickhead? You not heard that Jay Z song? Where you're just another bro, idiot boy, man. Stockholm syndrome killing my people. Coons are killing my people, man. Should be eliminated still if you're on this coon everything, man. More likes, people. 271 watching. 127 likes. Help the guy out. Come on. Would you take... Telemans wouldn't be my first choice. Yeah. Your FM streams are elite, bro. I appreciate that, man. I've been enjoying the time off from it. We'll get back to that. On, we'll get back to that tomorrow. If there's time today, I, I might. But it all depends, man. No shame in getting ripped. Fred Jacka does that all the time. Two shit dons, man. Man, I say in Kelbrook, I'm just looking forward to seeing Khan getting chinned as usual. Two tired duns, man. Tonight is going to be good defence versus crap attack. Let's hope, man. Let's hope. 
any new youngsters, not that I can see. Sambi hides, doesn't come and collect the ball from the back four, which I did dislike about him. He does hide, 100%. does hide. I can't see where, again, I want to be wrong. I can't I, I can't see where this number eight thing is coming. And look at the look at the look at their papers. Is it worse than racism? Mikel Antonio defends teammate Kurt Zuma over cat fool. Like, he didn't defend him. Flipping hell, man. Again, when you don't work, when you don't work in high-ranking positions in, in the media or at football clubs, you can't control the precedent or the narratives, man. It's quite mad. Lokonga can do a better job at right back than Cedric. Disagree, because Lokonga doesn't look over his shoulders. He's a bit like a deer in a headlight. Anytime there's a midfielder that doesn't look over their shoulders, there's questions. Which league has the best youngsters? No clue, man. They're popping up everywhere, really. I mean, if we want to learn about Wolves quickly, people. Bloody hell, there's a lot of, oh, there's a lot of stuff here. But anyways, Bruno Lago, let's see what's going on here. Holding at least two tactical video sessions a day in new presentation suite, sorry, taking more active approach than Nuno Espirito Santo, helping restore their main street. How Bruno Lago has Wolves, has got Wolves firing again with fans dreaming of Europe. Let's see what's going on. Former Benfica manager, as you lot know, he made it clear that if his methods were going to pay off, that would need to change. So once he accepted the Wolves job, uh, Wolf staff got off to work identifying a classroom that had previously been used for education sessions for the academy players. About oh, fucking hell, man! You know, I'm, people again. That's nice for him. Again, long story short, he's, he's he's doing it from a tactical point of view. Hardly revolutionary, bro. He don't need to do his homework on us, man. I mean, are we gonna praise a manager for doing their homework? He's a great tactician, great tactician. You know, lovely what he's doing, but. I'm not going to praise a manager for doing and setting up analytical stuff, which we've seen. I'm not going to praise a manager for doing his homework. I'm not going to praise a manager for finding a system. These are things where I know at my club we go over the top, but you should be doing that anyways. It's like praising a chef for, for cleaning his knife before he uses it again and again. These are basics, you know, or putting things in order. Before every session, Lago will stand at the screen and explain what he wants, often using clips from recent matches, training with a strong emphasis, usually lasts about an hour, finishing at midday, after which the defenders, midfielders and forwards will separate for meetings with different coaches, which, again, this is nothing out of the ordinary, but big up the Wolves gaffer. Oh, people, I just got angry in me. You know, shout out to shout out to Kilman's founded a, a, a new lease of life. And again, you know, we covered this best Portuguese Bruno in England this season. <laughs> Bro, Chucks is a wavy baller. Cats definitely get more love than the homeless, bro. Definitely. Animal abuse is no joke, but seeing the football community drag this out more than most racist issues is quite sad. Bro, I've never heard someone say a man should get sacked over racism. I've never, no one said that for Terry. No one said that, you know. It's crazy. Need to get this politics out of football. No room for hate, just love the game. Unfortunately, football mirrors society, society mirrors football, and football has to be used as a vehicle. We'd love for football to just be able to concentrate on football. Certain people don't have this privilege. Certain people just can't turn off and get out. Certain people, this is a reality, so it is what it is. As, as I've said, Ramsey's a baller. Come on, see, let's get the likes up, everyone. Make sure you're hitting the like if you haven't. Shout out to you, man. Appreciate that. Hella managers don't. Well, that's why they're in problems, isn't it? Like, that's why right. you're a shit gaffer if you're doing that. If you're the modern day gaffer and you're doing this thing, then you do what my man's doing. If not, you get yourself in trouble. Really? Not going to praise you for doing the basics. What else is going on? Don't forget to follow on Twitch, people. I'm trying to see if there's any other Arsenal related news. It don't seem like there is. We all know how it ends with Arteta and highly anticipated games. Hey, man, positivity, people. Positivity, positivity, positivity. Get your questions in as well. Would you play Pepe tonight? He's on the bench, man. Facts, no one has been sacked over racism. Double standard is crazy. And it's just it's like a spit in the face, really. You know, right is right, wrong is wrong. And, you know, Chris, you know, for you to understand that, you know, you have to concede that what we all concede, you know, what most thinking men and girls think is, that, okay, animal cruelty is wrong, but the energy is different. 
Well, no, Zuma deserves everything thrown his way, but there's just no. I'm not a big animal lover, but there's just it's just fucked up doing that, isn't it? But if we're gonna be the morality police around animals, then you know, are these people showing the same energy around fox hunting? Are they showing the same energy around uh, around zoos? I'm not talking about endangered centers for species. I'm talking about zoos, which clearly is just taking. It's, it's no different from slavery. You're pulling that, well, you're pulling animals from Africa, from India, and you're slapping them in London. You know, and that's not their conditions. Is if we're gonna do the morality police that you know leather boots. If we're gonna do this morality thing, it's brazy. That Spartak Donny, he was racing to Kamara, surely shouldn't be on the pitch. It's brazy. And I like bro, when have you seen a 250k fan? You know, Rick again, innocent until proven guilty per se. Disclaimer, you know, Giggs is a bit of a madman, but technically Giggs hasn't lost his Welsh job. You know, so in football, it's a mistake if you hit if 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 you if you're racist, you're not necessarily people condemn you, but you're not necessarily finished if you unfortunately do domestic violence and all these things. The cat's where we draw the line, and right is right, wrong is wrong. It's crazy, man. I was reading Emerson's comments last night, full of new accounts. But again, it's sneaky, bro. Like we, we know, we know how it gets on social media with the racial abuse or just abuse of players in general when they when things go wrong. It's sneaky. Do you know how mad? Do you know how mad it is that a footballer? Obviously, we get frustrated. But if a footballer makes a mistake, they're probably gonna feel like shit anyways. But it's to know that you're gonna go on social media and you're gonna see sneaky dons just bare abuse that is it's not needed man that's why I, I i don't blame when i see i think ramsdale's great i could be wrong but i think ramsdale holding and lakonga they've all defo free had it at some point they've got that sort of um what do you call it man you know when you can only comment not that if you're a real person but if you're their friend or something i don't i i would do that because more more time media companies are looking after these guys accounts but footballers need to protect their sanity man do what you can to protect your sanity and it's sad because Football never switches off and it's highlighted with social media nowadays. You know, we're, we've never been that much closer to footballers in general now. And it's like the closer you get, they, it is being used for good stuff. Look at Lacazette and Paterno and that. The kid was being bullied and all these things. But for every one good thing, there's a million bad things. I'd say the net's being used for more bad than good. I'll be real with you. Look, obviously, we've got our community that we've built here. But equally, there's people that are going out there and just abusing man, and, and just moving mad. Bro, Zuma would have got killed, bro. <laughs> Zuma would have got killed, bro. Big up, DG. Watching your Kirkland segment. Appreciate that. Even here in the US, shit like that still gets thrown, still hits home knowing hypocrites revolving around racism and hate. It's just the way Chris Kirkland come out with his chest and said that. Didn't make sense. I get the comparisons. But the reason Zuma actions are so bad is because as a pet owner, your job is to nourish and protect your animals. So, again, I don't know. You said child comparisons are a reach, but the requirements are similar. I don't know where children have got into it. I've only spoken on my own. But again, Alexander, respectfully, you're, you're again being obtuse. We know he's a pet owner. We know your job's to nurture. But your job as a decent human being, whether someone is black, white, brown, man, woman, is also to be a decent human being. Why are people so moved by a cat? respectfully and not as moved with you know people will say stop kneeling over racism they wouldn't if 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 people for whatever reason you know because we let's be honest there is symbolic do feel good do nothing um symbols nobody is going to tell no one in this society will tell them to stop doing it around the cats you know and it's the reaction it's the very fact that it's moved people people want blood people should want blood over racism people want him to never work again nobody said that around katie hopkins nobody said that around nigel farage at masses nobody's done that so it's not it, it's not really making sense. And again, I, as much as I don't agree with it, you know, I just look at over here in England, you know, ethnic minorities make up about that much, you know, of the world of 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 of, of England. There's probably more people that have a cat in their house than have come across an ethnic minority. So I can see why I don't agree with it, but why there's direct empathy. They can empathize, they can sympathize, they can't. And it's either that or it's either people are desensitized because of the nature you see it, or people think certain individuals are less human, you know, are less worthy. It's one of the three. I'm not sure where you've gone with the child comparisons and whatnot. And again, two truths can be right in the same realm in that Zuma, there's no standing for it. But the fallout, what you can't deny is the fallout and the knock-on effects are very damaging.
we need to make a statement tonight if we're if we are serious about top four. It seems no one wants it. Trust. You know, trust. We just need to, bro. We just need to win games, bro. It's big, 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 big. Twenty twenty two. You know, it's it's February. You know, by the time we play our next game next Saturday, it's the nineteenth. February soon done. We still ain't got a win on the board. Crazy, crazy. I mean, I don't know the specifics around Overmars, but allegedly he's been sending some sort of emails to multiple women within Ajax's organization. What nature of them emails? You could probably imagine how graphic they are. I'm not saying you, DJ. I didn't say he said me, but I just didn't know what the cat said. I'm saying my opinion about the situation. I hear you, but I'm just not getting it. I would act the same way if Smith Rowe or Saka kicked a cat. Alexander, respectfully, I don't think you're getting it, bro. It doesn't matter if it's them two, really. Like, it goes deeper than that. It's nothing to do with Arsenal ties. Because, you know, Mikel Antonio now coming out and saying certain things. There's going to be so many people. I like you, I like you Antonio. I don't like you now. Yeah, he was moving mad at work. If I see someone being racist, they will get a slap and give it again. But many people are not like that. A cat can't defend themselves. It's not about the cat, though. You know, it's not about the fact that a cat can't defend themselves. It's the active way around it. Facts, DG, people need to sp people will speak up on the cat situation and quiet against race. Bro, when did Chris Kirkland? I don't listen. If you don't want to speak, don't speak in it. But it's pretty damning and it's what we've known already. You go through history, you know, there was a time when certain, you know, civil rights, animals could eat with certain plates, but not others. It's crazy, man. This country has a drinking culture. We kill over animals. Bro, Suarez never lost his Adidas deal and I don't care about Zuma's deal or his things. It's just a fall on the fallout effect. If this was the energy around, bro, Hungary got 40,000 fine, a 40k fine. And like we saw on Twitch, you know, we started looking at some of the comments around Antonio. People start using language like these lot always want to make it the race card. Forget the race card. These lot. These lot. These lot. Who is these lot? Both children and animals are defenseless. And in my opinion, well, to be honest, animals not necessarily defenseless. No one is. Um, and in my opinion, physically harmful abuse to things is worse than just verbal abuse. Your opinion's irrelevant. Abuse is abuse, you know. Racism can racism can be systemic, it can be physical, it can be verbal. Abuse is abuse, you know. You're doing that then. And again, you're allowed to be deliberately obtuse. Again, Jamie Carragher spat somewhere. Crazy. It's brazy. And I don't know where we've gone with children. I think people are deliberately being obtuse. I ain't arguing. I like to see people's, I like to see people's trail of thought because I don't, I think people's privilege is speaking, is, is speaking out there. You know, like people are not stopping themselves and listening to the nonsense. I'm just seeking to evolve. DG, the thing is, all the stuff you said is right when it's racism and so on, people should have the same energy. But at the end of the day, he's wrong. Should people ignore what he did because others didn't speak on racism? deliberately being obtuse you daddy daddy pig i mean you're moving like a bit of a twat you haven't heard anything i've said i've literally said right is right wrong is wrong he deserves everything from his fine to everything it's just a knock-on effect and the fallout and the energy what are you talking about you're not making sense you know nobody said to be quiet nobody said to be quiet nobody is protecting zuma he's on his own for that it's the knock-on effect it's bigger than zuma it's the noise that this has made you know again if i go and shoot a dog in the street it's going to be all over. It's going to move people. Not that I'm saying I'm going to. If I go and shoot a, a, an ethnic minority in the street, it's not going to happen. You know, and it's almost respectfully. You can see by some of these comments, I can't see, so, you know, you, Alexander, I can see you lot are just, just screaming privilege. You've got to want to learn. You don't want to learn. People stay missing the point. Deliberately obtuse, Alexander, the real Alexander, you know. You say it makes no sense. Again, you're, you're listening with, with certain radio frequencies. You, you, the last sentence doesn't make sense. To be able to listen, to be able to speak and have a conversation, you should be able to leave, man. You should be able to speak. Oh, yeah, someone's using a big word like gatekeeping. gatekeeping. If calling out inaccurate comments make me a gatekeeper, then you have to keep it moving. Bro, nobody said you're speaking. Nobody said you don't. And this is where it comes down to, whether when it's men listening to women speak, minorities speaking to 
other minorities who don't experience racism. Stop making it about your being attacked personally. Nobody said you don't condone racism. Cond you know, you condone racism. You, no, nobody said you do not condemn it. What are you talking about? You know, you stop using words. Man said gatekeeping. If if not listening to bullshit and what's wrong makes me a gatekeeper, then I'm a gatekeeper. Always the other thing. Give me the fucking captain's armband. You know, you're using words you don't understand. You know, what are you talking about? We are talking, should be able to talk about one thing without negative connotations towards race. And again, it's not about race. It's in isolated incidences. It's how the, it's, it's the, it's the language. Again, two, two truths can live in the same realm. You're deliberately being obtuse. I'd rather, I'd take being a gatekeeper over than someone being deliberately obtuse any day of the week. You're not listening. You're hearing what you want to hear. You're projecting. You're, you're displaying a confirmation bias. Don't know how people are missing the point. Man, just saying keep the same energy for everything that's wrong. Is it so hard? There's no way you can look at this. Is it so hard to understand? Thank you. There's no way you can look at this and say, I've never seen this energy. Like I see Daddy Pig say, whatever his name is, didn't say you shouldn't speak about it because you didn't speak about other things, you know. Didn't say any, didn't say you shouldn't be able to speak about one thing, you know. There is what about you in life, but at the same time, you cannot act like you cannot see this. What's going on? Stop being deliberately obtuse. Oh, it's not about being spot on, man. You're not making sense. Can you be a little less obtuse yourself? Are you saying Zuma's outrage is motivated or impacted by race? You're just being an idiot. You're just being an idiot. What are you talking about? You don't know what the word obtuse means. If you need to go and Google that right now, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Where did anyone say it's race motivated? It's the language around it. Do you know what? I like when this happens because it re people start revealing themselves. Like people start revealing themselves, man. Like people start revealing themselves, man. It's not about whether the cat can defend himself or not. It's the uh, yeah, man. We've we've spoken about it enough, man. People need to open their ears. People need to clean their ears. But when you can live, when you can go through your life burying your head in the sand, you know. This is why I like my guy Chris from earlier. Yeah, man. It's time to do good games, man. I forget eliminated, man. Anywho, somebody asks about Rancy's stream. Stop spamming, my guy. I'm going to be there. That's at 1.15. I'm not going to be there next week, though. DJ, unfortunately, people choose what they want. People choose what they want to see all the time. People are allowed to live in ignorance, you know. Again, for those in the back, Zuma deserves every criticism he gets for animals. But if you cannot see the reaction, the fallout, the energy towards him losing his livelihood and all of these sort of things, comparison to when it's racist, you know, people, I'm not saying Zuma does or doesn't deserve a second chance, but nobody has, nobody's given him that angle. When it's, when somebody uses the N-word or something, it's a mistake. It happened time ago. You know, let's just say this happened a year ago. If he called, if somebody called someone the N-word and it was two years ago, they would sit there and say, oh, well, it happened and he's not the same person. If Zuma's thing was two years ago, three years ago, people, rightly so, people are not going to care that it happened years ago. You did that. If you cannot see the, 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 the damn right logic, you cannot see it because you won't see it or you have never in your life had to see it. If that makes me a gatekeeper, if that make you know, whatever in it, you know, people are using words that don't even know what they're talking about, man. Exactly. These conversations can only be had with a certain level of sensibility. Why do you think? I will try and understand your point, but why do you think I don't necessarily care? Because I know people are silly. You know, people don't want to learn. People already have their opinion and that's it. People, there's certain people that unfortunately are being obtuse because they don't know and they're willing to listen. There's other people. I will not kill you for your opinion. If you don't think it's got anything to do with racism, kill, cool. I will not try and educate someone on racism. You know, we're at, it's 2022. I'm tired of that. Anywho. Bro, O'Hara punching up people, punching up 14 year olds, punching up youths. No one looks at him as less of a human. Half of these people that probably get in that zoom off for of hitting his cat probably hit cats and dogs themselves and move mad themselves. And again, I'm not defending Zuma. Fuck Zuma for what he's done. He's by himself with that. Allow it, man. 
bro, you don't get what I'm saying. I don't care if you're here to argue or not, bro. You didn't, you didn't listen. I don't like when people don't listen to what I said. By all means, hold me accountable for what I've said. Don't tell me what I've said and not said. Go for your own comments. Go elsewhere. Bro, Ronaldo's to. And this is why I like it because people will people reveal themselves. People like people love your rhythm, not your blues. They lo might love what I talk about with Arsenal. They don't love me. And as much as I love Arsenal, I don't care about Arsenal more than, than my culture, than what's right and what, what's wrong, regardless of someone's race, religion and background. Society is more important. Before I ever, ever, ever say anything about Arsenal, what do you see? You see a young black youth. You don't know me that I like football. No, you see a young black youth with a hoodie. Think about the pre prejudice that comes with that. Allow it, man. Some people just listen to come up with a counter argument. They don't want to because people already got their agendas, mate. DJs like football, no one can be balanced. Everyone hears what they want to hear. I mean, some of us can be more balanced than others. Some of us can look at realities that are not our own. Yeah, you're right, man. Ignorance is bliss. People that are revealing themselves, they're allowed to just, you know, it's an easier way of life. Thinking is a difficult thing. Very difficult. I'm confused. Man, I'm just using words, man. And again, respectfully, you know, as all by all means, RSPCA take up his things, but just make sure the same energy is there. Make sure you've got that energy around fox hunting, around people wearing levers, around things like that. It's crazy. Look at Joey Barton messing up his teammates' eye with a lighter. Bro, that man there are just fugs, man. Animal abuse and racism, two wrongs, but people have done worse than Zuma and get less of a hit back. This is it. But yeah, fuck all of that. You see people's true agendas when ish hits the fetch. Oh, bro, this is why I love it. People reveal, you know, when the devil believes, a wise person once told me, when the devil reveals himself, believe me, when I see, I don't want to bother, I'm just going to call him pig, bro. Man, can't be calling next man daddy and that. But when you see pig and Alexander, these are you. Alexander's been in the, no more, but he's been in the comments all the time. But this is how a man really thinks. Equally, there's been comments that are different from my trailer thought, but the way it's terminalized and worded, all right, you can have a conversation. One thing I don't like is when people try and talk about something they don't know with so much authority. And the thing is, people are the wickedest thing is people will sit there and say, playing a race card, people will sit there and say, why did Antonio mention racism? Who's the first bloody person who mentioned racism on the airwaves? Who's the first person who mentioned a racism on the airwaves? Who's the whole reason that got the, who's the one that's got a, vi a video lo line, um, lined up with me? With, well, I've got a video with someone and, and well, I've done a video on someone and the title, their name's in the title. Chris Kirkland. Chris Kirkland come out and said racism. But then you know, you'll see comments like you lot. If you don't like it, go back to your country. You could have a Burgundy passport and born in it. And I'm sure I'm not just making this a West Ham thing. Antonio, guys that are screaming your name, shouting your name, watch, they don't like you again. They love your rhythm, not your blues. And this is why I love, again, this is why I have hope in society. And this is why I love my channel, because for every two twats, there's a million guys that are thinking. Selective attention and hearing, confirmation bias, everyone being challenged about what they've grown up believing and didn't know what they believe. All these things act as mirrors in front of us. Exactly, exactly, exactly. It's like over here, when you speak about Great Britain, I'm not saying you can't be proud about England, being from England or things like that. But I just feel in society, there's, there's this reluctance to really admit what the royal family was, what England, what Great Britain is foundation on, what this country society is, is built on slavery. It's, you know, it's built on slavery. You look at London, you know, London, even in society right now, again, there's a lot of good things about London, but there's a high crime rate, there's high everything. You look at London in whatever century, that's what London was, you know. Come on now, like, come on. Bro, come on, man. It's crazy, man, but. One love to you lot, though. You lot give me hope, man. You know, it's an interesting debate. Like I said, I like when people share, show their true colours, man. Come on, Chris. We're not paying pay no attention to, 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 to no keyboard warriors, man. I'll entertain it. It makes the time go, you know, but we ain't paying no attention. Come on, my guy, man. Fuck all of them, man. That's the point, you know. <laughs> That's the point. 
Great Britain is engraved on slavery. <laughs> you know, look at the museums, look at the zoos, <laughs> look at half of the roads, look at half of how, half of how act, ar aristocratic families have built their wealth. You know, you're taught about slavery in America here. Come on now, you know. I'm not sure what point you're trying to make there. Anyways, back to football now, man. Yes, DG, if we don't get three points tonight, we can't start with any premature we bottled it rubbish. Wolves are a tough team at home, not conceded much. Hope we get points, but perspective. I hear you. You're not wrong, but reality is you need three points. You know, you did bottle it. You know, you did bottle it. If you don't beat Wolves, they're a good team. Like you said, they're two points off us. It's a big game, but you need to bottle it. If we're honest, when have we won when it's mattered? This season, when? When when have we beaten a team that's actually 30? I know we're so gassed about beat, about playing well against City and I'm not belittling it, but we need to differentiate playing well with results. You don't get points for playing well. You get points for winning. When have we beat a team this season where it's mattered like that, where they've actually been good at the time? You can say we beat Spurs, but they weren't 30 at the time. Now, we can't be held accountable for that. We can only play what's in front of us. But when have we? So I would say, yeah, it is. I, obviously... People are going to, I know what you're saying. People are going to just move mad, carry on mad. You know how the meltdowns are. But reality is we ain't got a win this year. You've seen two of our rivals for, for, for Europe drop points. Yes, Wolves are a great team. But, you know, if you want to get top four, top six, win leagues, stay in leagues, you need to win difficult games. You know, when last did we do it? You know, fair enough. We You know, when we went into the West Ham game, we doppied them. I, I, I might even say Villa as well because... Going into the game, we were saying, yo, it's a big test, boom, 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 fair play. But other than that, we haven't really, you know. So I, I don't I wouldn't quite say it's it's bottling it and, and all of those sort of things that that you know I know where you're getting at the agendas and stuff, but reality is it's the business end of the, of the season now. I know as Arsenal fans, we like to chop up half of the table to make us look top. I know we like to, you know, we might have had a, we might have lost the game over 90 minutes, but the first 10 might have been amazing. So we'll focus on the 10 minutes or we'll say, forget that, you know, remove that goal when this happens. Reality is you can't do that. Reality is business end of the season now. Business end, you know, 17 games. You're not going to be perfect for all. We're not going to win all. We are going to drop some points, but you need to make ground. At the end of the day, whatever narrative these guys want to paint for the end of the season, they will paint it. All that matters is where you start and finish. And if we don't finish in the top six, if we finish eighth again, God forbid, there has to rightly so be some question marks. 100%. Like anything. Folks, are we doing? Talk today is about capitalizing on the situation. Everyone around us drop points exactly. And again, if you win today, there's going to be a time where you don't win, where where we don't win, and other people take points. And again, we need to because we ain't got to win this season. I would say the games I'm really annoyed about this season that, that are, we haven't taken points. I would say Crystal Palace at home, Brighton away, um, United. We didn't even get a point, and we just pissing about there. Uh, Burnley, that's just gone. There's definitely another one. Give me a sec. It will come to me. Who, who did I say? Everton, United, Brighton, Palace. There's definitely a fifth. There's definitely a fifth, people. I can't remember. There's definitely, there's definitely a fifth, man. There's definitely a fifth. I think I said Palace at home. Palace at home, Brighton away, United away. Uh... Yeah, I said about four or four or so games there, really. So they're the ones. I actually think West Ham are going to passion, passion themselves into top four come May. Again, this is the time where you need, you know, you need random stars to stand up to be counted, but you need consistency. We just need everything to go right. The Everton game was jarring. Burnley, again, Burnley, again. Any, type, any team that plays a, def a decent defensive low block, we have problems. Wolves. Pardon me, not quite the Wolves sol defensive solidarity that they had a few years ago, but they're fairly decent defensively. You know, a couple of them games I said were away from home. Do we have a problem dealing with the 12th man just to play devil's advocate? City at home, I won't really be on to us about City at home because we will. I don't really like to do this whole well, we normally get battered and we still lost, but it was cool in it. I don't, you don't get points for that in it, but I won't really be on to them about City at home because. 
You should have won. Again, it's points dropped from a winning position, but it's City, really and truly. Looking at the game, we switched off for the two goals. We didn't win our individual battles. Ben White holding the cross that's coming initially. We were down to 10 men. We were tired and all of these things. And there is it there. We struggle to break down low blocks. Wolves have one of the best defensive units. So people need to do a bit more, try and do break the thing down. And as we know, they're going to be on crud today. They're doing well. They should fan. Let's be honest. Everyone should fancy Arsenal. There's no fear factor there. As much as Arteta's doing his thing and whatnot, there's no fear factor. What have we done to be feared of? What have we given to the game? Liverpool, City, them and they have earned their fears. Chelsea to a degree. I know they're moving mad, but they're Champions League winners. We ain't done nothing in the game. None of the players have done nothing in the game for, for a consistent period of time. Obviously, people like Saka and that are marked men now. You know, Saka's got everyone and, and their dog, you know, onto, onto, onto him when he's on the pitch. But yeah, man. We need to just stand up to be counted. Reality is, it's a tough run of games. And I don't want to keep talking about the same things, but you look at our results, I mean, our games to come, well, you can't really pick winners. There's games you can say, yeah, Arsenal should win, as we should have said with Burnley. I'm more onto us trying to win at Burn trying to win at home, like winning our home games. Like we've got sandwiched in between this double head of Wolves, which will be at home. We've got Brentford. Uh, you need, for me, you need to be beating Brentford and Wolves at home. Like, can, if anything, the home games, make sure you win them. But, bro, we've got Wolves twice. We've got, you know, we've got just just the teams that kind of scare us. We've got to play Brighton. We've got Wolves. We've got Villa. We've got Leicester. We've got United. We've got Liverpool still. You've got North London Derby. You've got Crystal Palace away. Home and away, they're scary. Brighton at home. Home and away, they're bookie. Southampton, home and away, they're bookie. You know, they might just want to complicate things for another North London side. And we handed it to them at, their, at our place. They're not going to be on that. We've got West Ham as well. So we need to pattern that, you know. Everton at home, we need to take advantage of that. Newcastle, you should be winning that. But again, the, them and we've got them and Watford, them and Watford and, and Leeds, these teams near the foot of the table at this point, moment in time, they start moving brazy, man. They start moving mad. So it's put up or shut up season now. Like there's no way around. Like there's there's nothing else to say. Like it's is if you lot want top four or whatever, it's time for you to do it. I know Saka's been talking about Europe. I know at a point Xhaka was talking about catching Liverpool and Chelsea. So whatever you say, clearly the players, I feel, have more ambition than the board. Clearly they would like to get Champions League, but I'd like to win the lottery. You know, I'd like to be financially free. Am I necessarily put, you know, cutting back some of my expenditures and, and making some sacrifices to get there one day? In, in general, yes. But in, for this example, no. So again, everyone would like to do things. Who really wants to seize it? Who's really said, all right, cool, this is what we want? It's down to these lot. Whatever narrative they want, they'll make it happen. In life, if you want something bad enough, you'll make it happen. Obviously, there's variables and whatnot, but you'll try as hard as you can. Tired of finding excuses. At the end of the day, bro, this is it. Am I annoyed that we didn't do anything in this in Jan? Of course. Do I feel we were kind of weaker in comparison? I know statistically it might say something, but I don't feel we score enough goals in comparison to people. I feel the, as much as I like our youngsters, we've got experience working against stars. A couple of players are inconsistent and some that are consistent are consistently mediocre. I don't really see a talisman. We've got some tough games. I can't really say, yo, I know what you're on. The same way we've got 17, 18 games left. I barely, there's, a, there's there's very few players I know what I'm going to get to get from from the, no, the next five games. So there's a lot of reasons for me not to have confidence, but it is what it is. We've made our bed or Edu and Arteta made it. And it is what it is, isn't it? Like, psh the reality rightly or wrongly this is the reality this is the thing this is what we're trying to do if you don't get it, we talk and this is why for me i don't think there should be talks about new deals especially where you haven't confirmed the top six top four finish i don't think there should be new deals for finishing eighth and seventh and that regardless of if you're doing the minimums of finding a consistent play a way of playing relationships building from a right back to a right wing a center half midfielders you only get praised so far it does feel like at times we overcompensate and, and and find excuses where there's none and sometimes where we need to cut excuses for certain individuals here i don't think we do i think arsenal's very volatile in that i think people are unfairly blamed for things that are systemic and i do think at the same time things that people need to be held accountable for there's every other excuse under the sun as to why not you can't have the rough with the smooth for instance with Arteta, we can't win. You can't win against Wolves and then sit there and praise him if we lose and say it's all the players. It don't work like that. We win, lose, and draw together. And I just think there's too much invested agendas in someone like Jacko, whether he's good or bad, Arteta, whether he's the man or not. There's, there's never, there's, there's very few people with, you know. 
I feel like a lot of clubs are like this, really. And I feel the only agenda should be Arsenal returning to what they want. We've all got different ways about how we do it. But yeah, man. In reflection, we didn't really lose that game because of City's brilliance. We, yeah, I think we lost it because we played, we, we switched off. I know he's down to 10 men, but in that last moment, City showed why they, they've got that hunger, but the cross is coming. We've left Kevin De Bruyne with time to get his head up and cross. You should never do that. Never do that. And we've lost our individual battles. Laporte is beat, I believe, Ben White at the time. Rob Holding's at sixes and sevens, you know. Yeah, we were unfortunate across aspects. But when you remove your emotion, or as I did and I saw it, that's what we could do better, those fine margins. Like I said, we played well, but we need to move away from playing well and not getting anything to getting something. Crazy one, man. We threw that out. Game away likes good food. Trust. Boy, business end of the stream. I need to see 200 likes. Appreciate that. We keep getting these damn chances to be clear in fourth. Lost to United, Everton, tied Burnley. If we don't win this, I'm done getting my hopes up. Opposition keeps slipping up. We don't capitalise. And I mean, the players know exactly what they need to do going into that game. At the same time, don't go into that game thinking, shit, 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 shit. We need to win. Recognise people have dropped points. There's a chance to move closer to your goals, hopes, dreams, ambitions and aspirations and do what you're doing. Two powerful African-American academic voices in the States. Never heard of them. Glenn Laurie and Professor John McWalter are active on YouTube together. Just did several pieces on this. I hear that. Goals win games and we need more. Tell them again, man. The thing is, we've got no goal scorers. Like Smith Rowe, Martinelli, Saka, I think they can score goals. They There are problems in the final third, but... They're not goal scorers. Like they're learning how to score goals. They're not goal scorers. For me, goal scorer, you got a reputation of scoring goals. I'm not asking man to be Salah, but Salah's done it for years. You're a goal scorer. Smith Rowe's been in the team for 18 months. This year, he's doing very well in terms of scoring goals. I can't say you're a goal scorer yet. Honestly, I'd rather see West Ham or Arsenal get fourth. Spurs fans are delusional and think they're a big team. And I hate United with a passion. I take joy in seeing them fail, boy. Love how United drew to Burnley and people don't say top four is and people don't say their top four ambition is over and this Arsenal hatred in the media. Shaka Penalty turned that City game on its head. To be fair to you, again, not to protect Shaka, but <laughs> if you watch the game again, Bernardo Silva's actually made a run off the ball and no one picks it up. And Xhaka's actually tried to do the good thing of following his runner. But then, obviously, you said it there. So, again, oh, shit. He just banged my foot much like Xhaka. Um, Soldiering it, though. You know, we've when we look past the emotion and the euphoria, we played stupid games and won stupid prizes. And I think games like City are the best because you can't switch off for a second. No matter how good you play, no matter how much you went down fighting, 10 men and whatnot, you switched off. We switched off. We switched off. You know, in reality, I think a big part that helped us watching the game again twice, I can't lie, City came into it without really their high fitness levels among everything. And they played against us where we're buzzing, we're trying to prove people wrong. And well, there was a lot good. There's a lot to take away from the game. But yeah, man. Arsenal have a good defence. They can relate. I think our problems, we're still not there fully in relation to it. But I would say my problems now are in the middle third. I think final third, we're starting to improve a bit. Still not really scored. So I'd say the final and the middle third, I don't get our midfield. I don't, I don't get the midfield. I don't get it, people. I'll be real. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't, I don't think, I don't think you can look at Xhaka and Partey and that screams long-termism. In the same way, the back five unit, the Halem boys and whatnot's going on, what's going on in the, in the other end of the field. <laughs> Your foot stress. I'm a soldier, man. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. Are you mad? That's a strong knee, you know. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Hell out of here. Big up, Joey. Don't even bring up that city game. I'm still fuming at the rest. Ref, you, me, and, and everyone. No, no, that's the only thing Xhaka gets praised for. He tracked his runner and then collapsed himself. I'm not praising him. Don't see this as Xhaka defence, Charlie. I just think it tell. I'm just saying collectively, us as a team has played stupid games. Because the if Xhaka is the one switched on defensively, where's the mandem? What's going on? That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not, yeah, bro. No, no, no. You, you get it. You're right. You know, I don't want to praise man for, I think at Arsenal, we overcompensate with the basics. You know, I love Tomiyasu. But as soon as Tommy Ashley could show that he could follow a runner or play a five-yard pass, I was like, oh, 
Oh my god, we've never seen this before. Standards have been on the floor, bro. Standards have been on the floor. We're praising man for working hard, you know. We're praising man for being a good example for young players. We're praising man for getting it to the point where we're overcompensating on their ability. I'm not saying they don't deserve praise, but it's dangerous. It's, it's a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous place to be in and be creeping into, in my opinion. Really, it's dangerous, scary, really. Very scary. What time stamp should we call it? I just call it 135, man. Quickly. So, yeah. I can't lie, though, people. As much as I love this, I've got five minutes. You might, you lot head over to Rancy's stream as well, people. I'm going to be there. We're going on Twitch. Me, Rancy, and Matisse, as we do on Thursday. I'm not going to be there next Thursday because you lot can't see. But behind this green screen is a window. That window is being taken out. It cost me an arm and a leg. It's being taken out. So, I'm literally, for a period, I think I will be online sometime at, on Thursday. But definitely won't be at one in it because they're going to be doing their thing. The, woman, the man said to me, or the woman on the phone, and then the man said to me they should be done by 3.34. So we'll work with that. We'll work with that. Charlie, you're right, man. I feel your pain. What's your score prediction? Brain says 2-1 Wolves. Heart says 1-0 Arsenal. Arteta needs to go. Come on, man. Have a bit more optimism. Hey, Ace, you was the one telling me I shouldn't do live streams. I, saw, I see one of your comments. Sorry, my guy. I respect you, but you were chatting shit. A man said, oh, only do Arsenal live streams. Shut up. You know, I'm going to do any other stream we're doing, man. It's a myth. Anyways, though, on that note, though, I can't lie. I'm going to be late if I don't go now. So you lot stay ca take care. Stay blessed. I'll see you lot at... 6.45 people, I've dropped the link It's in the pin message, make sure you lot are there Again, hopefully Arsenal give us Something to make, you know To be happy about, why do we still keep Xhaka, you'd have to speak to Mikel Arteta About that, you know You lot stay stay safe, be well I like Ward Prowse, whoever asks that, your comment's gone But yeah, let me get out of here man. Peace <laughs> Like, easy, easy, easy.